Hello, Erica Cullum here from Collective Commons. Thank you for joining me for our first Facebook Live Collective Combo. Um, so just to give you a quick background, the whole reason that I started this is because I believe and I know that we have everything that we need inside of us. And if there's anything that I think we're collectively learning in this moment, it's that at the end of the day, this is what we have, we have us. And so um, I've just wanted to share some conversations that I've been having with helpers and healers on how you can tap into your own inner knowing, your own inner strength, how you can be your own healer. And so I'm really excited. We're gonna um, bring Susan uh, on here in just a minute to talk about some hypnotherapy. Um, as we get a couple people tuned into the live, thank you all for showing up. Um, so I'm going to start this by I'm going to preface this by saying that I'm a bit of a skeptic and um, I haven't always known what hypnotherapy is. But uh, a couple years ago when I was getting ready to give birth to my daughter, I did a, a form of self hypnosis called hypnobirthing, hypnobabies. And I don't know how it worked, but I listened to tracks every night before I went to sleep. I always fell asleep. I never stayed awake through any of them. I had the most beautiful birth experience. So I'm so excited to talk to Susan today about a little bit about how our subconscious works and how we can all tap into that. So Susan Chavka, let's bring you on. Are you there? Hi, Susan. Hi. Thank you for having me here today. Erica. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for joining me. I'm so, so intrigued by the work you do. Um, Susan and I just met very recently and she's, we had a conversation and she started telling me all about this amazing work that she's been doing with hypnotherapy. And it's like, we've got to, we've got to tell more people about this. So um, Susan, tell us a little bit about your, your journey and, and how you got to be where you are now. Yes. Thank you so much, Erica, for having me on. Um, this is my first video, so I might be a little nervous um, with the camera and all, but I just want to give a little background of me. My name is Susan Chavka. I'm a hypnotherapist and a rapid transformational therapist trained by Marissa Peer in Los Angeles. I'm located out here in Orange County, California, uh, married with two daughters, um, preteen and teen. Um, and um, I was a, a private investigator for 27 years before I even thought of this, like this could even be a possibility. I worked in downtown Los Angeles and in Orange County and um, for 27 years. And now I found this and this absolutely just changed my life dramatically. I was born um, in East Chicago, Indiana to a single mom who was a electrician in the steel mills of Chicago. And um, it was rough, you know, having a single mom being raised by my grandparents and everything that you perceive along your way as a child, you're not just your age, I'm not just 47. I am all the ages I've ever been. So I carry with me that six-year-old girl, that five-year-old girl. So throughout my life, the craziness through all the trauma or just different events we have through our lives attach to us and hold on to us and we carry those with us. And I did that. I had so many limiting blocks, so many, so much anxiety and sabotage within myself. And I had no idea where it was coming from. It was like running on a hamster wheel. My conscious mind was saying, I want this. I'm positive. I'm confident. I can get whatever I want. Everything's available to me. But my subconscious, the one that's driving the car, 95 to 99 percent of your brain, the subconscious, your old memories, that's what I'm operating on from was outdated, irrelevant and beliefs I formed when I was just a few years old. You form beliefs when you're just a few years old and you are operating on those beliefs today. Yeah. Absolutely. So how did you how did you come to find I, I love that about your story, too, is that you're a private investigator um, uh, and, and now you're doing hypnotherapy. So how did you come into this work? Well, first, um, I've always I'm I'm I take care of a foster child also on um, part time, but I've always wanted to give back. I always love helping because when I was a little girl, I 
I was raised by my grandparents for 12 years, and then I went to live with my mom and stepdad. I was alone a lot to raise myself, to find direction, to figure out what to do. So I made a lot of mistakes. I didn't have a lot of direction or attention on me. So I would do things. I would cut my wrists. So someone would notice me. Someone would take notice and see my suffering, my pain, because a lot of times it's silent. And I was I didn't have a voice when I was little. And so I would do things and, and suffer and sit in my own misery, not knowing that I didn't have to be this way. And it just now that I know what I know and how I've healed my anxiety, my physical neck pain that I no longer need surgery from, all the things I've healed from myself, my daughter and my clients has I have to give back. It's it's my duty to give back to help as many people, um, even if they don't have the income that could afford this service. I work with them because everyone, no matter what economic background, you deserve to have a free life and have utter joy and freedom. And it's available. And I did not know that till this. That's like the craziest thing. Right. Well, and I loved that, you know, when we were talking about this before um, and we just trying to talk about like how, what, what can someone expect when they're working with you that you were saying that a lot of things can be really resolved and cleared up in just a couple sessions. This isn't like going to months and months of therapy. This is a pretty quick turnaround. Mm, thank you, Erica. That's a great question because I didn't know this existed. My husband actually um, told me, would you ever do hypnotherapy? This is way back. And I was like, oh no, if I do hypnotherapy, I feel like I'm running okay right now. I'm surviving and I'm doing good. If I go into hypnotherapy, what if they open Pandora's box and something comes out that my brilliant brain was trying to lock away? So not the case. Couldn't be any, any farther from the truth. There's no mind control. You, It's like you're zoning out. When you drive a car and you're like, how did I get here? Or you're watching a movie and you're like, oh, what just happened? That's hypnosis. That moment where you just zone out, like meditate, that's hypnosis. You're in control, you're aware. And I was so scared to go under hypnosis and do that. And when I found out what it really was and educated myself, I was blown away. And then to find out only one to three sessions for any issue. So if you have anxiety um, or money blocks or career issue or relationship or skin issues, whatever it may be, sports performance, um, anything it may be, one to three sessions for anything. If it's something like weight loss that you've been having for a while or severe depression, it may take up to two to three sessions, but that's it. No years, months. It's I've healed a ton of clients with just one session and for anxiety, for fears, for phobias, um, just to feel good, to find that they control the power. They can feel better. Yeah, that's that's so encouraging, um, especially now. And uh, you're also because we're living in this this quarantine time right now. So this is something that you're, you know, is available to people even from the comfort of their own home, which is also incredibly helpful right now. Um, yeah. So I've, I've had even therapists, psychotherapists and other people have done sessions with me on Zoom and the sessions in my office here in Southern California on Zoom, equally effective. They're amazing. They're about two hours long um, and and you feel good. And you're there's three kinds of healing where you heal immediately, retroactive, and then you just, you know, notice the slow changes throughout. So it's it's the most rapid, permanent thing I could ever imagine. I wouldn't believe it till I actually went to the school, trained under Marissa Peer and found this form of therapy. And the best part of rapid transformational therapy, it combines the best of neuroscience, hypnotherapy, uh, CBT, um, NLP, it takes all the best benefits of those and puts it in there. So you have tools to go in and update your life, upgrade you. It's like a reboot almost like that's the best way to describe. It. It's like rebooting your life. If I gave you a computer from the 80s and said, how is this working out for you? You would probably say I'm struggling. It's not working well. I'm not getting things done. I'm trying. Mm -hmm. but it's just I'm hitting a wall. And that's what we are. We're operating on all of our younger selves, all that we believed, all the the beliefs we believed. Like when I was a little kid, um, you know, 
my grandma and aunt used to take me to open houses. This is crazy. And I was probably like five, six years old and seven, eight. There was years they did this. And they would I put me in a big winter jacket just outside Chicago. And we'd go to these open houses and they would steal tchotchkes and shove them in my jacket. Just put a bunch of different things. And I had no clue what was going on. I'm just a child. Right. And, but my perception how did I perceive things? And that's what we're working on. We are operating right now on our old perception, outdated, irrelevant beliefs of what we believed and thought. And it's it causes sabotage and the hamster wheel of, I want help, but it's not working. And mm -hmm. you're not gonna get it until you just clean that and reboot yourself. And to know that it's that quick and it's permanent, crazy. So, yeah, can you explain to us a little bit about because I'm a, I'm a nerd about like the the neuroscience and just a little bit about how scientifically hypnotherapy helps us heal these these old patterns and beliefs. Definitely. Well, your your brain basically you have your conscious brain, and that's about one to five percent of how you're operating. That's your logic, your planning, your thinking. That's you saying I'm going to go and I'm going to take charge of this day. And then you have your subconscious and that's about 95 to 99 percent of the driving force of what you do every day without you even knowing it. It's like the habits that you formed, the beliefs you formed and you're operating in that. So when you go under hypnosis, it's like you're in control. You're fully aware. You remember mostly and um, you just are chilling in a comfortable spot of your home. And I'm just getting you to a relaxed trance where you can talk and have a conversation with me. But the interesting thing, when you're under that hypnotic state, you're, you're, it's almost like your conscious mind just takes a rest because he's not really in charge. And then the subconscious mind awakens and heightens. And it's just by being relaxed, like when you're driving and zoning out and you just get to that space where you understand, you know, you're telling me all these events that happened in your life and you know them all, you're aware of them all, but you're seeing them in a different light. When you see them in that relaxed state of subconscious, there's something that they've even had MRI images that show all the different things firing up in your brain to show that you're more aware and heightened. So you're understanding why those things, well, you knew they happened, but now you're seeing why you're operating the way and why you're the way you are now. So it's almost like you're taking the current self you wish you could be and you're matching it to your old self. So you can not have that fight and battle with your subconscious. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like you, when, when you're guiding people through this, the state of hypnosis, um, which I mean, there's, there's no like swinging pocket watches or anything, right? You're just, you're just talking to people, you're just getting them relaxed, but then you're able to kind of guide them through where they can almost, would it, would it be correct? Or maybe to say like, for me, it sounds like it might almost be like a way of observing your past, like kind of almost mm -hmm. detaching from it a little bit. So you can kind of see it for what it is. Does that mm -hmm. sound? That's a very good description of it. It really is because we're so operating we're, we're trying to do our logic like, OK, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to feel good. Today is going to I'm not going to let this pandemic keep me down. I'm going to I'm going to use positive. Positive vibes aren't going to work all alone. Mm -hmm. it, I, I know that I can give you some anxiety relief and tell you some things to do and I can teach you self hypnosis and a lot of things. And those will help just like self help books and meditating are amazing. And it does help. And you should definitely do it. However, this is more like. I, you won't have to battle anymore. You're just going to have that relief and see things in a different light. You're going to go there and you're going to go, wow, I knew that no one showed up for my high school graduation when I was 18. And I told myself it didn't bother me because I knew my parents didn't have the money to fly down. But that little girl, that 18 year old girl's perception, it doesn't matter myself, I felt abandoned. My parents didn't come to my high school graduation because I went to three high schools four different times and I moved away from Indiana, came back to California and walked down the stage by myself. And I have to get hypnotized and keep up with the practice to just six times a year. We practice sessions on each other as RTT therapists. And I went back to an abandonment issue and I had no... I didn't know why I didn't want to do Facebook lives. I didn't understand why I didn't want to do this and put myself and be visible. I did not want to be visible. And I'm a confident person that's dealt with 
so many things. But I was like, why am I not? And I went back. She took me to the scene where I was on my high school getting my diploma. I was about 100 pounds overweight, bullied as can be, felt that no one cared for me in the world. And I really looked around and not one family or friend member was there. That's that perception. But you ask me today, oh, I'm okay. The normal me would say, oh, I'm fine. My mom and I, I, I love and miss her. Rest in peace, mom. But I, it hurt. And I didn't realize that it still hurt because the me today said, she loves me. We're best friends. She did the best she could. And she wanted to come. She just didn't have the means. But the little girl I was still carrying with me said, it's not available to me. I don't matter. I shouldn't put myself out there. I need to hide. And that's, that's what I needed to fix. And so we take those beliefs. And that's where the neuroscience and all the other um, tools come in that Marissa has um, put together. That's mind blowing. So when you go through those scenes and you see them, you're almost having an aha moment. And you're awake. We're just chilling. And you have that aha moment. And then I reframe it. And I tell you, it's not me. I'm not 18 years old anymore because I don't have to look for someone else's acceptance. The acceptance comes inside of me when I find the peace and love that I deserve. And that's, it's it's a beautiful awakening that everyone should experience yeah. because we all have the same common feeling is we're not enough. Right, and that's so powerful. And I think um, I, I love in, in anything that I'm doing of like actually like not treating symptoms, but getting to the root of the problem. And so I, I completely agree with you, like meditations and visualization, positive thoughts and, you know, all of that stuff is really great. But if that's just like masking over the layer of, you know, not getting down to the core of what's really mm -hmm. happening and that that root like feeling, then um, it can only go so far. And so it's incredibly encouraging to hear um, how it can be guided, you know, and I love that, you know, for for you as a hypnotherapist, you know, you're saying that, that you actually, you know, you go through this process regularly as part of your training and part of what you do. And so, you know, you're, you're speaking from a place of you, you, you've experienced that. And I love how, you know, you can tell us about your experiences when you're kind of under hypnosis, because I think, I think that's the, you know, if I had to say, anything about hypnosis or kind of what my preconceived ideas were about it is that, you know, you're letting someone into your subconscious and you, you don't know what's going on in there, but just getting that, you know, hearing that you're completely there, you're completely with it. Like just because you're, you're lowering, you know, you're, you're in that resting state. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't mean that you're not in control. Yes, definitely. That's exactly it. You have, it's not, it's not that movie, uh, Dinner with Schmucks, where you see the mind power and everyone's mm -hmm. like, Ooh, that's, that's stage hypnosis that was for fun. And that's finding the most adjustable people. This is clinical hypnotherapy that uses neuroscience. They do operations on them all the time. When people can't go into anesthesia, they'll have a, uh, certified hypnotherapist like myself or doctor that will guide them to stay under hypnosis just so they can have brain surgery. And they've done amazing multiple hour brain surgeries. And it's been around um, since 15 BC in Egypt. They had pictures on the walls of them doing this as a form of healing. So it stayed around for a reason and is working phenomenally. Yeah, I like I said when when I was entering this, I mean the the self hypnosis work that I did for childbirth. I mean, I still remember having the most wonderful, yeah. pretty painless, really quick, easy experience, and I I know that all had to do with having my mind in the right place and and being there. So I I love that. Um, so one thing that um, you know, what would if, if someone were interested more in hypnotherapy like what is what does someone need to know like if, if you're thinking like is this for me like what where where would you have them start well they can definitely um who's it for um i treat men women children as early as three years old nail biting bed wetting um night terrors things any kind of trauma physical pain um I had I had um, nerves shooting out in my uh, neck, all exposed nerves. I literally couldn't turn more than an inch without crying. 
Um, I didn't have health insurance, so I didn't want to get an MRI or go to the you know, doctor. So it was very scary. I ended up going because it was so bad. And they told me four days a week of physical therapy and surgery. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to get my mind right. I'm going to talk to my mind. I'm going to communicate with my mind. I'm going to go do cell command therapy, a little healing vortex, and I'm going to hypnotize myself and heal myself. And I, I honestly, I believe in this because the things I've seen, my clients, my family, myself, uh, colleagues, it's amazing. But I was like, okay, you know, I'm going in 100%. But did I 100% believe I was going to fix this and, and how much pain I was in on a nine out of 10 on the scale? I did. I haven't slept. It, I healed myself about four or five months ago, but I hadn't slept on my back or side. I'm sorry, on my side for over seven years because of the pain. And my pain was always there every day. And it was stress. And that's the number one cause for hair loss. Why do men in their early 20s have hair loss? Stress. Why do we have physical pain? Stress. I have a great quote, and I don't know why I don't memorize this, but it's so important to know that... Um, all the pain that you feel in your body. Um, I lost the quote now, of course. But basically, where you can't, every physical emotion you have, every emotion you have causes a physical reaction in your body. So if you're under stress and your body and you're telling your body, I can't do this, this is hard, I, I don't want to work or I want I want to work, whatever you're telling, whatever your battle, your mind's number one job is to keep you alive on this planet. That's it. You can tell your brain good things and bad things. It's not going to decipher which one it wants to let in. It's going to let them all in. So when you tell your brain, I can't do this. You might get IBS and be stuck at home and not be able to drive to work. Or you might get fibromyalgia and have to take, you know, think you have to take pain medications because it's everywhere on TV and you can't get away from it and you're desperate and you just want help. But there are alternatives. And this, I didn't even know that I could heal my physical pain. But physical pain is amazing. There was a, um, a client that actually he would sweat profusely. And he didn't know why grown man just would sweat all the time. Just that was his mechanism. And he thought, OK, that's just me. I'm a sweater. I just, you know, maybe it's something wrong with my glands. Um, he worked at getting his hands burned, like the different things, different medical procedures where you can take off, like do different uh, Botox or I don't know all the different forms, but to stop your sweating. Mm -hmm. And he did everything and anything and nothing worked. He did one session of hypnotherapy and got to find out that there was in his past, here he was aware of all this stuff in his past, but it came to light more. He basically would cause himself to sweat when he was nine years old because there were two times in his life that his dad would not beat him. And that's when he was sweating because he was a hardworking man at nine and when he slept. So his brilliant brain at such a young age came up with the idea one time he was sweating just naturally. And his dad like, oh, look at you, a strong man. You're a wor good worker and said, wouldn't abuse him. But he wasn't working, he said that day. But from that day on, his brilliant mind said, I have to find a way to survive because my number one job as the brain is to keep you alive. So mm -hmm. I have to switch something on to keep alive. And that brilliant brain's job wanted to stay alive. So it started sweating profusely all wow. day, every day. He'd be at a restaurant having a nice dinner, just sweating carrying a rag, carrying extra change of clothes. Wow. He found, he knew his dad did that, but he didn't realize that aha moment was, oh my God, I gave this to myself. Yeah. Making that connection. And now that he knew he gave it to himself, the best part was he knew he can get rid of it. If he was, if his brilliant mind could get rid of it at nine, it would be easy in his thirties. So it's all about communicating with your mind and getting to that root cause. But you could do things now, today, to help your anxiety during this pandemic. You don't have to, you know, you can have a, a Zoom session with me, definitely. But if you can't or don't want to, and you still need more information, you could definitely just give me a call, book a free consultation. I will talk to you and answer any questions. Um, you could book it online. But what you also can do is just learn to communicate with your mind. We have a choice every day. Whatever one of the rules of the mind is, whatever we focus on, we get more of. So if you focus on, I have laundry, I have a house to clean, I have no money, I have, you know, I don't know when my, you know, 
this is going to happen when if I'm going to get a job. If you focus on those things, you're going to get more of that. And so the best thing you could do to yourself is just to focus on the things you do want, not the things you don't want in a positive way. So talking to your mind, but it takes to train any muscle. It takes 21 days. So just repetition, repetition, right on your mirrors. I am enough to wake up in the morning and say, I love myself. Don't just say I'm positive And I, you know, but say those things to you, be your biggest cheerleader. Um, we're our worst critics. We compare ourselves to everyone. We see people doing things. Oh, I got ready today. I put makeup on. Oh, if you would have saw me two hours ago, I did this because it's a state of mind. And like Jay-Z said, it's a state of mind. So I'm going into that state, bringing my own happiness into it. And you have to find your own happiness. But number one, everyone could just communicate with their brain and tell themselves, I love you. I honor you. I accept you. I forgive you. We can do this. And it's going to be okay because it is. It is. We've gone through these things before. We weren't around, but we have and we will survive. But we can't live in fear because living in fear will not serve you anything. Like if you can say there's one thing fear will do for me, it won't. You can be smart and live smart, but don't live in fear because that that just goes down that rabbit hole where you don't want to go. And you could actually bring yourself into a good place by just telling yourself the right words and loving yourself and accepting yourself. But it takes a lot of work. Yeah. The mind is so incredibly powerful. And I love that, you know, that you were able to just help us give, get some insight on how to kind of find some inner peace, even, yeah. you know, even without all the hypnotherapy and everything, but just really starting on getting back to basics and, you know, getting in touch with our mind and, and, being cognizant of our thoughts. Yeah. So that, yeah. If you just, if you just listen to your conscious mind, it's going to, you know, want to do that, but the subconscious is just going to battle it. You just have to try to keep reminding yourself how special and we're all meant to be here. The universe wants us all. We all have a voice. We all need to be heard. And you just need to know that you do matter and there is help and it's available and it doesn't have to take forever and it doesn't have to be hard or scary. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Susan, thank you. Thank you so much for, for speaking with me today and sharing some of all of the knowledge that you know about hypnotherapy and how we can we can heal ourselves. Um, what would be the best place for people to um, get in touch with you? Um, you can go on my website. It's Susan Chavka. I'll spell it S-U-S-A-N-C-A-V-K-A dot com. You can go on there, find some information, some testimonials. Um, but also um, you could also book a free consultation on there and um, book that. I'll give you a call. We'll chat, see if it's right for you. And, you know, no harm, no foul. But um, also I'm going to be putting audios on there, too. Just um, And I'm going to be doing a free group hypnosis workshop. So if you're interested in that, which is going to be amazing, I'm. Um, you could just sign up. Um, I don't even have, I, I'm so new to this. I don't even know how to do anything to capture your email or anything or send you stuff. So just if you sign up with your email, I will, when I do my group session, I will send you an email to a Zoom link and it's free. And I'm hoping to get like tons of people just to do anxiety relief, take you down the stairs to relax and you don't have to do anything but sit back. And it's like a guided meditation. It's really more of a meditation, but it's hypnotherapy. That sounds awesome. Well, yes, I'll definitely link your site um, in below, wherever, wherever we end up putting this. Um, but I'm so appreciative of your time. That was incredibly interesting. And I, I want to dig more. Definitely want to do uh do this workshop. In fact, someone Tina's asking right now, do you know when this, this online workshop is going to be yet? As soon as I get people to fill up, I'm just going to do it. Um, this is my big first thing I'm supposed to be doing a, uh, I'm supposed to provide another interview for someone. So as soon as that's up, hopefully maybe at the end of this week, maybe okay. sooner, but, um, the more people that go, it'll just ignite my fire to get it going. And it's amazing. Um, yeah, I would de definitely recommend people to look up rapid transformational therapy because that in itself is such a beautiful form um, that I wish I knew earlier and glad I do now. So I am v very grateful, Erica, for you to do this. And I appreciate you so, so, so much. Absolutely. Well, yes, we're going to um, send everyone to your website so that we can get in on this this online free workshop group hypnosis and 
Thank you, Susan. Well, I'm again, so happy. Thank you so much. I can't wait to talk again another time. Yes. Have a good one, Erica. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Bye.